Thank you, Henry, and hello, everyone. It's great to welcome you at what I'm delighted to say is the world's first Human Layer Security Summit. My name is Tim Sadler. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Tessian, and there are three things that I want to talk to you about today. In part one, I'm going to talk to you about why data breaches are at an all-time high. In part two, I'm going to talk to you about human layer security and why I think that today we need to incorporate this into every organization's cybersecurity strategy. And then part three, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Tessian and what we're doing to secure people in the enterprise using email. So without further ado, let's kick off. Part one, why are data breaches at an all-time high? It will come as no surprise to anybody in the room that there have been a surge in the volume of cyber attacks and data breaches for organizations over the past five years. And it's increased the cost for organizations who are having to deal with this risk. Accenture's recent survey showed that there's been a 67% increase in security breaches for the average company in the last five years. But as I said, I don't think this is gonna surprise anybody in the room. But what is less well known is the trend behind this. Like, why is this actually happening? It's not like we're not trying to secure our organizations today with some kind of cybersecurity strategy in place. The big problem is that at definition, our way of thinking uh, for cybersecurity is out of date. So we see the textbook definition here, the protection of networks, devices, and data. And that's exactly what we've been doing, focusing on machines and systems, but not our people. Today, your employees control your most sensitive systems and data. Whether it's John in your finance team who's handling your financial accounts and banking data, or it might be Julia in your HR team who's got access to all of your HR platforms and payroll systems. Your employees are the gatekeepers to this sensitive data and these sensitive systems. And the cybersecurity strategy that every organization has in place is reliant on them doing the right thing and being secure 100% of the time. So coming back to our original question, why are data breaches on the rise? It's because today data breaches are being caused by people. And why is this the case? It's because people have three key security vulnerabilities. They break the rules, they make mistakes, and they can easily be hacked. We're now going to take a look at each of these with some real life examples from the past few years. So first up, a real life example of people breaking the rules. This one's from 2017. An employee at a major healthcare provider steals customer records to sell on the dark web. Now, there was nothing particularly sophisticated about this. An employee downloaded a bulk report from the CRM system at their company and then sent that report to a personal email account and then offered those records for sale on the dark web. So the data lost included names, addresses, dates of birth, nationality, and the Information Commissioner's Office fined the organization about 150,000 pounds. This is a pre-GDPR breach, so it's worth noting that fines for this kind of thing now would probably be uh, significantly more. Now we can look at a real life example of people making mistakes. So in what was probably one of the biggest breaches of the past year, one of the major credit card providers in the US lost 100 million customer records. For those of you who know the breach that I'm talking about, you probably will have read that actually a hacker gained access to this data. And that actually is correct. They did. They gained access to the data in an exposed S3 bucket. But what led to this breach was employee human error when misconfiguring the firewall settings for the organization. And that led to the exposed bucket and the Amazon Web Services deployment for the organization and exposed this. The company in question have said that they believe this breach is going to cost $500 million to set right. So finally, let's look at an example of people being hacked in the enterprise. This one's from 2018. The Dutch operation of a French film company fell victim to a business email compromise scam, where an attacker impersonated the identity of the Dutch entity CEO and emailed the finance director, pretending to be from a Dubai-based company, saying that they were in acquisition talks. 
So the attacker was impersonating the CEO, emailing the legitimate finance director, and the attackers duped the finance director into transferring a total of 19 million euros to their bank account. What is especially remarkable about this is this was not one transaction. This was three transactions. So this was deception over a sustained time period. The CEO and the finance director were held responsible for this, and they were fired from the organization. And the organization lost, as we've said, 19 million euros. That is a huge amount of money. So just to recap as we finish part one, data breaches are on the rise. They're being caused by people. And the big problem is that even though all of our organizations have a cybersecurity strategy in place, it's out of date. In the 90s, we created advanced technology to secure our networks. We call them firewalls. Last decade, we created advanced technology to secure devices, and we all now have EDR platforms. But today, we must protect people. Human layer security is the third paradigm of cybersecurity, and we all need to integrate this into our cybersecurity strategy. So let's move on to part two. What is human layer security? The human layer of an organization uses many different interfaces. And there are interactions that people make within all of these different interfaces. So it could be somebody in finance that's manipulating data in Excel. Or it could be someone in HR sending sensitive data on email. The problem is that with the countless interactions that take place in these systems every single day, it only takes one instance of human error to lead to a security breach. And that's why we need a human layer security platform to keep our organizations and our employees secure. As a security team, what options do you have for securing people uh, in your enterprise? So what we're going to do now is we're just going to look at four of the approaches that organizations are trying to use today to secure their people. First up is removal. So we can simply secure somebody by removing their access to systems and data. I guess you can't, have a, you can't get hacked by email if you don't have access to email. The second is policies. We could just simply create a policy to instruct somebody how they should interact with these systems or what they can and can't do with this data. The third is training. We might use some kind of phishing simulation platform or e-learning platform to try and educate people to do the right thing 100% of the time. And finally, there is rule-based technology. We all probably have some form of legacy DLP solution or a secure email gateway that can use rule-based controls to uh, secure people in a, in a sort of crude way. Let's look at some examples of these with a fictional employee we'll call John um, and evaluate the pros and cons of these approaches. So first up, removal. You remove John's access from M&A project data but he can no longer do his job. So you know, I guess we would all probably say that this is untenable. We can't actually take away access to data and systems. We need to empower our employees. The second is, OK, well, we could remind John of the policies that we have as an organization. It only takes five minutes to read the policy. So not a huge burden on John's time, but it's not that effective. There's no guarantee that John is going to remember this in everything that he does every day. The third is training. Again, you know, it takes a little bit more time. You might have to do regular phishing simulations. You might have to do regular e-learning. But again, there's no guarantee that this is going to be retained. And actually, it's incredibly difficult to train away human error. This is why cars have seatbelts, because it's statistically likely that there will be some mistake you make uh, that results in a, a bad outcome. And then finally, we could use rule-based technology. How many of us have tried to secure people in the enterprise by saying, John can no longer send attachments to at gmail.com domains? You know, on one hand, it's offering some layer of protection from employees sending highly sensitive information to personal email accounts. But it's incredibly limiting for people in your organization that need to interact with those domains, like your HR team who might be communicating with candidates, et cetera. The other thing is, what if John doesn't have a Gmail domain? What if he owns his own personal domain that won't be on any blacklist? So the big problem with all of these approaches is that they don't balance efficacy and user experience. This is really, really critical with human layer security. 
when we are implementing any security for people in our organization, we need to make sure that it empowers them. It makes their job easier. It makes their life better. It doesn't get in their way. So the way we think about this is balancing effectiveness with productivity impact. And all of these approaches are failing to meet the minimum viable criteria. Human layer security is not trivial. In the same way that we've used advanced technology to secure our networks and secure our devices, we also need to use advanced technology to secure our people. And that's exactly what we're doing at Tessian. So machine learning is an enabling technology to secure the human layer of an organization. It's high efficacy. It's automatic. It doesn't require any rules to be set. And also, it doesn't impede your employees' experience. You don't need to retrain them on how to use email or how to use systems. And it's also it, the high efficacy means that it isn't going to get in their way or it, it isn't going to create all these speed bumps. So on to part three, Tessian, human layer security for email. So we secure people using email in a way that's both high efficacy and doesn't create uh, an impact to their day-to-day -day experience. And the way we think about email at Tessian is that you know, this is where people spend 40% of their screen time at work. It's the main artery of communication for the human layer. And it's the platform through which some of your organization's most sensitive data is shared. Now, the other thing about email is it's also an open gateway. Anyone from outside can send anything into your organization via email. And we all see this with the volume of phishing and spear phishing attacks uh, that we're seeing every single day. And this is the headline stat about how big a problem this is. $26 billion have been lost since 2016 from business email compromise scams in the US. So this is an FBI stat. That is a staggering amount of money all through the security risk of people failing to use email correctly or being hacked on email. The other stat that is staggering is that, according to the Information Commissioner's Office, misdirected emails are the number one digital data security incident reported under GDPR. So this is a huge, huge problem that organizations need to address. Human error on email is a major security threat to every organization. So how do you address this risk? Tessian uses machine learning to understand historical email behavior that's taken uh, st historical email behavior that's taken place in an organization. So we learn from that. We learn the normal sending patterns and behaviors. And what we can then do is analyze all inbound and all outbound email traffic and automatically determine whether the email looks like it contains a security threat. We're going to look at an example here of outbound email. So Tessian is always on. It's in the background. The employee doesn't know that it's there. Um, but every time an employee drafts an email and hits send, we perform a 500 millisecond check, and we analyze the content of the email and determine whether it's OK to send or not. So we're looking at things like the recipients on the email. We're looking at the content of the email, the attachments, and the content of those attachments. And ultimately, we're making a conclusion. At this moment in time, for this person, does this email look like a security threat? In this instance, does this email look like it's being sent to the correct recipient? And again, we're doing this in 500 milliseconds. It's, it's difficult to do that, but it's, it's super, super fast. And if we detect something that looks unusual, what we do is we show a notification to the user. So we give them context as to what we think they're doing wrong. And we've built our system to bake in explainable principles to our machine learning algorithms. So we can actually tell the user the specific reason why we think they're making a mistake or what looks particularly wrong with the email. So this is really, really important to help them make the right decision by understanding the context. Tessian addresses the key security vulnerabilities of people using email through three modules. So Tessian Enforcer prevents people breaking the rules by stopping emails going to unauthorized accounts or personal accounts. Tessian Guardian prevents people making mistakes by addressing the risk of misdirected email communications. And Tessian Defender stops people being hacked by email by identifying and stopping advanced impersonation or advanced spear phishing attacks uh, on email. 
So to recap what we've discussed today, in part one, we learned that human error is the number one cause of data breaches because people break the rules, they make mistakes, and they can be hacked. In part two, we spoke about how our cybersecurity strategy today has to incorporate human layer security. And this is the third paradigm of cybersecurity. And in part three, we spoke about human layer security for email and how Tessian can help address this big risk for organizations. Tessian protects world-leading organizations and is a core part of these organizations' human layer security strategy. I'm delighted to see so many of our customers in the audience today. I'm also delighted that we've got a number of our customers that are participating in events uh, at the summit today and are involved in talks. And next up, I'm welcoming one of those customers, Mark Lodgson, who's going to be talking about measuring cyber culture. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a really good morning, and it's been great to speak with you all today. Thank you. <clears throat>